Okay, so yes, I saw all videos and very interesting that these cops were claiming, well not surprising, they're claiming there is a law that you're not allowed to record. It's surprising to me that they're using this in 2017 when mm -hmm. by now everybody should know. I mean, they used to do that back in, when I first started the website. And, and then what also interested me is the dogs, they brought the dogs out there and I didn't see the dog scratching or making any kind of indication that there was anything yeah, in the car. He, he just, the dog was just smelling around like dogs do and then they searched your car. So t t they didn't. Can, can you just tell and, us uh, what happened from the beginning? Just tell us your story from the, what day and when, when this took well, place. Well, uh, I, I want to uh, I want to touch on the dog thing real quick. Um, I I know a couple of people that you know are that do canine stuff, and uh, what they've told me is that the dogs have specific indicators to uh, to show narcotics when they sense narcotics, and these indicators are something that should be very obvious um, because the dogs are supposed to show when there's a difference between narcotics and you know if it's like food or something else that smells good like other animals, um, and they're trained to either like lay down in front of where they think the narcotics are or sit down or, you know, like start whining or something. But this dog, it looked like just kept sniffing the areas that he was told to sniff and then got pulled away. And, you know, and I was reading something by a man named Barry Cooper, who's a former drug enforcement cop turned activist. And he has a website and he, he basically said, I'm going to read you what he wrote. An alert includes noticeable behavior by changes triggered by odor interest, followed by a scratch near the odor source. Behavior changes include a sudden head jerk in the direction of the odor source, slowing or speeding of a wagon tail, body posture, changes in changes in breathing patterns. If the canine detects the odor of a narcotic during a search, the dog communicates this to the handler by scratching near the surface. Behavior changes without a scratch are not enough to announce an alert. Just a scratching without behavior changes is not an alert. Both must be witnessed by the handler in order for contraband to be considered detected. Now, I didn't see anything like that. No, one yeah, or the I, other, not both at all. Yeah, definitely not. I, I didn't either, and I tried to ask them before the dog got there, when the dog got there and afterwards, what the dog's indicator was, you know, when he senses narcotics, but they wouldn't tell me. Okay. So, so tell us, the, just, I mean, just give us the whole story. I mean, that... Yeah, so, so basically, um, you know, I drive Uber in the evenings. I got a call, or I got an Uber request. I picked a guy up. And took him, you know, maybe two or three miles to where, to where, you know, he was supposed to go. He told me he was picking up a paycheck. Um, so he pulled up to a, a house. He ran in. He came back maybe two or three minutes later with a piece of paper. You know, it looked like a paycheck, something in an envelope. Um, you know, got in the car, um, and we drove. I was going to drive him back home. Um, we got maybe a block or two, and, uh, you know, the first officer blue-lighted me. Um, I pulled into the parking lot. And, you know, three or four more cops pulled in behind me as well. And, you know, they all approached the vehicle. Um, they looked, you know, they, I asked them what they had pulled me over for, and they told me that they think I should know. And, uh, you know, I, just, I explained to them that I'm just an Uber driver, and this is my passenger. So they explained that I was coming from a drug house, um, you know, that's been under surveillance, and that it looked like a drug deal. Um, they told me that they were going to search me and my vehicle, and I told them no. So they... Uh, you know, I told them that, you know, my passenger has his right to, you know, allow them to search him, but I don't consent to the search of me or my vehicle. So they asked the passenger to step out, and uh, he stepped out, let them fully search him. Um, he did have a paycheck on him when he went to go pick up. Um, and he didn't have any narcotics, any drugs whatsoever, or anything illegal. Um, so they let him go. Um, but uh, that's when the, uh, while they were searching him, is when the officer told me to stop recording, because it's against the law. Um, I told him I would keep recording because it's my right, and he came to the other side of the vehicle and told me if I don't stop recording, he's taking me to jail. I refused, so he uh, reached for the door handle to try to open the door and pull me out, and I locked the door, and you can hear where then he says, you know, open the door, I'm taking you to jail, and I refused again. Um, he pulled to the handle a couple times, but I kept my hand on the lock to keep him from opening the door. Um, it's at that point, you know, I told him that I had the right to film the police and that I'm an attorney. You know, he questioned it, you know, didn't believe me, and then he uh, went and called the canine. When he went to call the canine for backup is when I asked the uh, deputy that was there, you know, if, if it was really against the law to film the police, and he told me that, yes, it's against the law, and that's a new, a new law that was just recently passed. Okay, so let me stop there. We have two different cops. Well, we have one cop from one agency, a deputy from a, 
another agency. Which agencies are these? Yeah, Wilmington Police Department and New Hanover County Sheriff's Department. Do you know their names? Um, the officer for New Hanover is a Sergeant Becker. I believe his first name is Ken. Ken or Kenneth. Right. Um, I do not remember the name of the uh, of the deputy, and the sheriff's department has not released it. And obviously, you know the law, and you know there is no law. But how do you think most people would have reacted? Just your your average person being told that it's illegal to record cops. Yeah, I think most people, you know, when they're told by the police to do something or else they're going to go to jail, they do it because they don't know the law. Most people don't know, you know, especially when the police is telling you that there's been a new law just recently passed. You know, most people aren't up to date on every new law that comes out. Definitely not to the point that they'd be willing to risk going to jail over it. So I think for most people, you know, the, the police could just lie and tell them to do whatever they want and say that there's a law, and most people will just, you know, abide by it. True. Okay, so go on. Um, so, yeah, they, uh, they brought the canine. Like I explained earlier, the, uh, the canine seemed to just sniff around the car. didn't seem to indicate anything. And then the sergeant went straight into the car, um, you know, and then uh, while he was searching, one of the other officers let me know that because the dog indicated on both sides of the vehicle, that they had probable cause to search the vehicle and to search me. So they searched me, and while the uh, sergeant searched the vehicle, um, I had nothing illegal on me, and they found nothing illegal in the car, even though they, you know, they went in between all the seeds, floorboards, floor mats. Well, well, they did find went. melatonin, I hear, on the video. So, <laughs> But that's not yeah. illegal. I mean, that's not illegal. It's not illegal. My mother takes over-the-counter mel melatonin, and she right. had some of it. That she, had, uh, she was in town the weekend before that. She had left some of it in my uh, in like in my glove compartment. Now, but it's, here's the other thing: the cop, the sergeant said he said something that sounded he is real interested in your car, and you said, "Why is that so funny?" When is that what you yeah, said? Yeah. yeah, the officer when I was standing there, the the dog was just sniffing the car, and the the, the sergeant said, "You know, real funny how the dog's interested in your car." And I told him, "You know, why is that funny?" But is that but the dog wasn't interested in your car. He was just sniffing around. Yeah. He was not doing any of these indicators that we mentioned earlier. So this cop's again is lying and hoping yeah. that he'll just believe whatever he says. Exactly. The, um, I mean, he, it's just kind of the thing that they do. When they want to get into a car, they know that they have to have probable cause. He didn't have it because I've not done anything to give them probable cause. So they bring the dog in. And before the dog gets there, they've already determined we'll make the dog sniff around the car and then we'll have a probable cause. The dog didn't even signal anything. He didn't have to. You know, and the canine didn't even tell the sergeant while we were standing there, hey, the dog's indicating. He just sniffed around the car, and the sergeant, you know, almost just knowing that that's all that it takes is having the dog sniff the car, just went straight into the vehicle. Yeah. If you watch the video, there's no communication between the canine officer and the sergeant telling him, you know, the dog's indicating, here, go ahead into the car. The, the sergeant just goes in. And, you know, he's looking for a big drug bust. He doesn't care about all the legalities of it. How many cops end up searching your car? You got sergeant... Was it Becker searching your car? Who else is searching your car? I think Becker was the only one. I'd have to really look at the video. I think Becker was the only one that actually went into the vehicle to search. I may be wrong on that. There may have been another one, but uh, I, I believe it was just Becker. And then, so they found nothing, and then they just let you go? Yeah, they, they found nothing. Uh, the sergeant that found nothing, you know, seemed pretty annoyed, but he didn't say anything else to me. He just walked to his car and sat in his car, and then one of the other officers told him, you know, there was nothing in your car or on you or on your passenger. You guys are free to go. And I drove him home. And that was it. So the, the guy you picked up and you, you took to get his paycheck, he you took him back home with his paycheck, right? Yeah. And what, yeah, what did he say about the whole thing? What did he say about the suspected drug house? Yeah, I talked to him a little bit on the way back. You know, he was pretty shocked on it all, too. Um, he tells me that he's a dog groomer and that uh, he's a private dog groomer and just takes care of people's pets. He said that uh, he had groomed the people that lived there's dog, and he just went to go pick up a paycheck from them because uh, I guess they pay him pretty consistently. So I guess you know they just wrote him out a personal check as a paycheck, and he just went to go pick that up. And he didn't seem to know anything else about the house at all. I mean, there might have been some suspected drug use of that house, but it had nothing to do with him. It certainly had nothing to do with me. Wow. So, so this took place when? What day? Um, the Sunday before last, so sometime in February, and it was around 5 or 6 o'clock. Do you know these cops or these deputies were wearing body cams? Yeah, I believe they were. Um, but as you know, the, um, 
due to a, a recent law, the body cam footage is not available except by court order. Right. And so it's never has to get a hold of it. So right. I, I record it. I want to get into that before we, we, we talk about that. I talked to you on Facebook about that. There is a new law in North Carolina that says body cam footage is is exempt from public records, which is bullshit. But that's, that, that's the law in New York, North Carolina. It, it is new. It was just passed a couple of months ago. So right. do you think they're thinking about that when they're trying to, you know, because they always exaggerate everything. Cops tend to just bullshit a lot. And they're, do you think they're referring to that law when they were telling you it's illegal to record? No. I don't. Um, the uh, the officer, you know, being an officer, if, if you think that something is actually a law and that someone's breaking it, and you tell them repeatedly to stop doing that, and they continue anyways and defy you, you're going to place them under arrest. Right. And the fact that he kind of gave up, you know, I'm pretty sure he knew it wasn't a law. But, you know, if, if you see, once once I actually said I was an attorney, you know, he stopped telling me he's going to take me to jail. He just called the canine unit in and went from there. So, yeah, yeah. So it tell yeah. us about this law. The, the North Carolina public records that makes it exempt. The body cam footage exempt from public records. Yeah, um, I think it's just a publicity thing. They don't want they don't want people constantly just trying to pull body cam footage to you know to put in the media, and so they wait until it's actually a court order. So a judge or an officer of the court can uh, can you know request it, and then a judge can sign off of it and get a court order to get the body cam for trial. But I think they want to keep that footage. Um, kind of isolated to, you know, to actual trials or to when a judge actually gives a court order for it. Um, you know, part of it makes sense. The the video is taken by them and it is theirs, and they know that officers mess up sometimes, and they don't want everything that they do to be scrutinized. Right, but of course, you know, the whole point of them having body cam in the first place is for transparency purposes, and they're just withholding the body cam footage, and this it defeats the purpose. Like. Okay, like in this case, if we want to get the body cam footage, what do we have to do? We can't just follow requests, right? We have to go through a judge, yeah. and I mean, they're not going to sign off on that, right? Yeah, you'd have to get a uh, you'd have to get a judge to to sign off a court order for you to obtain the body cam footage of that. And um, you know, it, there's a chance that it's been deleted by now. There was no incident, no actual files charged, or you know, nothing was filed, no one was charged with anything. So I think it's it's just as likely that the body cam footage from that event was probably deleted immediately after. But, but I don't under think any, under any laws that says they have they can't delete the footage for a certain amount of months or weeks or whatever days. Yeah, I, I'm unsure of it. There, that might be a statute. I'm, I'm not sure of that. Because the reason I'm asking is I'm interested in hearing the conversation between themselves. Because there's another case from some I remember I wrote about where the dog did not indicate. And the cop admitted to the other cop the dog did not indicate, but they told the driver that the dog did indicate. And then I think that cop ended up getting arrested or, or fired or, or he got in trouble and the charges were dropped on the guy. But yeah, they were saying that they're, so they're, I'm wondering if there, there's conversation between these cops or these deputies saying that we want to just like search this car despite that we have no probable cause. And that would be, that would be interesting to hear what they're, they're saying on the body cam footage. Right. Yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in that as well. Um, you know, good luck. I uh, I don't think that you'd be able to get that footage. That uh, it'd be it'd be pretty tough. Um, you have to not just media purposes. You'd have to convince a judge that you know there's some you know outstanding reason or some special cause that you need this footage. And uh, you know, the judge isn't going to sign off on that. They'd be signing off on requests for that all the time if they do. You know, people would just be requesting body cam footage for just every day. You know, there's people that would want, you know, specific officers, they would just want their entire shift of footage constantly. And they need to be constantly having to, you know, make it public record for people. Well, are you going to pursue this in a, legally? Are you going to file any lawsuits or anything? No, I don't plan to. Initially, um, you know, I work with these people. You know, I, I work at the courthouse. You know, I mainly work in a different county, but I work in this county sometimes. And, uh, you know, I initially just wanted an apology to start from Sergeant Becker, the one that, uh, you know, was kind of a jerk to me. Uh, I wanted to speak to him one, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, and I got his number from the non-emergency line here. And I tried calling him several times, but, you know, he refused to speak to me. And so, you know, I kind of took a step forward and, you know, talked to somebody from Port City Daily who con reached out and contacted them, you know, but I, I'm sure that the uh, once they got a hold of it, they told Sergeant Becker, you know, not to make any comments further with me 
and uh, it's, it's kind of just gone from there. Port City Daily put out an article about it. A couple people bit. You know, a couple of the local stations ran it, and then you know now it's it's become kind of a national media issue. So, who else have you talked to as far as the media goes? Oh man, um, yeah. So I've talked to a few journalists from some smaller newspapers. Um, the Star News here in Wilmington ran the paper or ran my story on their front page of the paper. Um, I know that uh, Charlotte and Raleigh and I believe Greensboro here in town, uh, their papers, they've at least run it either online or in the actual actual print. Um, I've, uh, I've spoken with CBS um, out of New York. Um, I spoke with somebody from the Washington Post earlier. Uh, I spoke with somebody out of Miami. Um, I have somebody from California at one of their papers. That, uh, that has an interview set up with me at 2.30, so after I finish speaking with you. Okay. Yeah, you're um, speaking to somebody from Miami now, that, so this may be another one. Okay, so let's, let's wrap this up. And what, what kind of law do you practice? Uh, criminal defense. I do uh, court-appointed work at, uh, in uh, Brunswick County here. Right, and then you have to drive the Uber to pay off your student loans? Yeah, so, so I make... I make, you know, a moderate amount, not a lot. It's quarter point of work isn't, you don't get rich off of it. It's enough to pay my bills, but that's it. And I need extra money to pay off student loans. You know, I mean, quite a bit of debt from undergrad and from graduate school. So, yeah. you know, Uber is just an extra 500 bucks a week or so to, you know, to cut into those debts. Now, now, when you were recording, were you live streaming on Facebook or just recording straight to your phone? No, just, just recording straight to my phone. Um, I've, I've live streamed things before, you know, not police encounters, but I find that when I live stream things, a lot of times the connection can get interrupted or the signal is not very clear. So it, it seemed to me like it was a, you know, I would get a better quality video or have less likely, less chance of losing it, you know, if I actually just recorded it on my phone. Anything live streamed to Facebook is property of Facebook and they can take down a live stream at any time and then I just wouldn't have it anymore. Yeah, that's happened before. And, um, yeah. And how long did you wait before you uploaded the videos from the incident? Um, so I uploaded the videos on my page, um, I believe, when I got home that night. Um, initially, it was made uh, just to friends only when I uploaded the videos. And I was waiting to see if I could get in contact with the, uh, the sergeant of the issue, you know, the Sergeant Becker. But uh, he refused to speak to me, and I kind of made, made the videos public, and then... Uh, you know, the guy from Port City Daily saw them, asked me if I wanted some media coverage, and it all went from there. Right, so you're actually and trying to handle this without going completely public with this, and the cops yeah, refused. Yeah, I initially, I initially considered that maybe it was just a misunderstanding, and I wanted to speak to you know the sergeant just one on one. I would, I would have honestly just taken an apology from him, you know, as you know, let's just let this be bygones, and you know, we'll see each other in court, and things will be okay, but. He refused to speak to me, and you know, I, I wasn't, you know, completely over the incident. I, I felt like if, you know, if the lying, if treating people like that, and then you know, even refusing to speak to them afterwards was kind of systematic, then I, you know, I wasn't over the something to be out there. I want people to at least know what their rights are, so that, you know, if an officer tells them not to do them anymore, they can say no. This is my right. And, you know, once something like this gets a little bit of fame or gets a little bit of media attention, I think the police would be a lot less likely to tell people, stop recording. Because, you know, you lie to somebody and this comes about, it kind of sets a precedent for other officers that they're not going to want to do the same thing and kind of get dragged into the media as well. Has the police department contacted you at all? Not since the media stuff. Um, when, well, when after Port City Daily ran their article, um, Internal Affairs at the Wilmington Police Department contacted me and let me know that they were investigating the sergeant um, and let me know that I hadn't committed any crimes and that I didn't need to worry about anything from the Wilmington Police Department. Um, I've not spoken to them since any of the news stations ran this. And how about the sheriff's office? Because that guy, one of their deputies told you the same thing. Um, yeah, no, none of the, uh, no one from the Sheriff's Department has contacted me. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to add to this? Um, yeah, um, I just want to add that, you know, at the end, and I've made this statement a few times, you know, I don't want any of the officers to be fired or to even, you know, be put on leave or anybody to get punished at all. You know, this isn't a vindictive thing. I honestly just, I don't want people to be coerced into giving up their rights. And, you know, that that's about it. I want people to be able to film the police without fear of, you know, being arrested, going to jail. 
And as long as that message gets out, you know, that's enough for me. Well, I don't need any sort of revenge. Yeah, like, you know, my question, my concern is if this cop says that to you, you know, he probably says it to other people. And so it would be nice to see what, um, to see his body cam footage, to see how he treats other people. Because if he lies to other people, he doesn't have a lot of credibility. And you as a criminal defense lawyer, you know, you should be, you should understand that. Because you guys, these guys, you get these cops on the stand and they're lying and then they're messing people's lives up. And yeah, that's exactly it. it. Once their credibility for truthfulness, truthfulness has been impeached, they're, it, it kind of hurts the rest of what they, you know, what they testify to. If if it's shown that they're willing to lie, you know, to coerce people, it kind of speaks to their truthfulness. I mean, he he's not under any law. I mean, it's not like he's taking the stand. He's not, you know, under oath. As far as I know, he doesn't have any lawful requirement to tell me the truth. It's just kind of, you know, it's something that isn't done. I mean, you, you wouldn't want to encourage the police to, to lie to people. I mean, there's times when the police being untrue or deceitful has its purpose. I don't think this is one of those times. Yeah, you know what bothered me as well? One of the cops was saying that you're not cooperating. You're not being, what was the word to use? You just, you, you know, they're blaming you. They're blaming, me, blaming you for, for everything that's going on when you're just standing up for your rights. Yeah, I, I was fully cooperative with everything. You know, I pulled over immediately when the, when they blue lighted me. You know, I gave them my license and registration. I you know answered all the questions that they had. You know, I was very polite. I let them know everything that was going on. You know, and and they gave me other orders which I complied with. The only orders that I didn't comply with um, were you know when they told me to stop recording because that's my right to record, and when they told me to get out because they were going to search my car, and that's my right to decline a search. And you know everything else, I was fully cooperative. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Jesse, uh, I know you have another interview. So thanks for your time, and we'll get something up. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, man. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.